Dr. Peterson, I'm really hoping you can share your thoughts on the Vegas shooting. Yeah. Well, what I would do is recommend the biblical lecture I did on Cain and Abel, I would say, because I think that that's a good summary of the state of mind that somebody has to be in in order to do what was done at Las Vegas. So you have to be very, very embittered by life in order to do that sort of thing and you have to be searching for revenge I would say and it's not you know you might think well it's only revenge on other people because you've developed hatred for people but it's deeper than that it's not just hatred for people I would say it's hatred for being itself and and the desire to take revenge on being for the outrage of the tragedy and suffering that's associated with being um, and maybe the tragedy and suffering that's been part and parcel of your own life. And that makes you embittered. And then past embittered becomes outraged. And past outraged becomes, well, homicidal or even genocidal. And that's a terrible state of mind to be in. It's a hellish state. Um, I believe that the best way to conceptualize the state of mind that someone has to be in in order to do something like the Columbine shootings, for example, or what happened in Las Vegas is that you're really, and I, you have to speak about it in religious languages, you're really out for revenge against God for the outrage of creation. That's what it looks like to me. And, and that's a state of mind that's truly hellish. And you can get there by brooding long enough. Now, it's also possible, I mean, this guy didn't have any previous history, criminal history or anything like that. He's pretty old. So, you know, there's also also, also the possibility of some kind of neurological pathology that that might be characteristic of him, you know, some degenerative neurological disease. There was a kid years ago at the University of Texas at Austin who climbed up on the tower there and shot a number of people with a high-powered rifle, and he had a fast-growing tumor on his hypothalamus and had reported, like, these being overcome with extreme feelings of rage. And so that's another possibility. But I would say the uh, embitterment hypothesis is the strongest one. I would also say too, I, I noticed that Steven Pinker tweeted this today, is that one of the ways of controlling this sort of thing would be for the press to agree not, for there to be a blanket agreement, not to publicize the name or any other identity markers of the people who do the shooting. Because there's also this really, what would you call it, arrogance, it's a kind of arrogance and pride, last ditch arrogance and pride that that is associated with the fantasies that drive this sort of behavior. And the fantasy is something like, well, after I do this, everyone will sure know the, who, who the hell I was, you know, even though maybe I was ignored or unhappy when I was alive. After I'm dead, everybody's going to know who I was and what I did. And, you know, so there's this underground desire for fame. I guess it's notoriety, but notoriety might be preferable to being ignored. And so, you know, there's a lot of talk about gun control, and that's understandable, especially with regards to automatic rifles. Um, <clears throat> although I also understand why the people who are gun owners are afraid of, 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 of allowing what they regard as one of their fundamental rights to be infringed upon. Um, but it would certainly be useful if we stop giving people who do this sort of thing a hundred million dollars worth of free publicity and all the notoriety they can manage. So, you know, that's another way of thinking about controlling it. So, how important do you believe the American right is the American right to bear arms and maintain militias? Is it equivalent to the right to free speech? Well, I don't think anything is equivalent to the right to free speech or the responsibility for free speech. Um, how important do I believe that that right is? Jesus, that's a tough question. You know, my dad's a hunter. He has 200 rifles, something like that. They're all single shots he believes in aiming carefully. Um, the culture I come from, which is northwestern Canada, is a rural culture, a hunting culture. People take their guns seriously there and it is definitely part of their lifestyle. I mean my dad's hunted his whole life and we ate wild meat almost all the time I was growing up. Um, I think that the right to bear arms is one of the markers of a of a free society. I don't think it's reasonable that only the police and the army should be allowed to be dangerous. Um, having said that, well, I think I'll just leave it at that. I mean, I feel obligated in some sense to go farther, especially with regards to what happened in Las Vegas, but um, 
it seems to me that mostly what happens after these mass shootings is that the event gets absolutely politicized and people take their standard positions and there's no moving either side and, and that's too bad. But um, I think that it's unfortunate to use an event like the Las Vegas event or the Columbine shootings to make political capital and I think that's usually what happens and so I'm not going to do that. I think it's an important right. I believe that the individual should be allowed or even encouraged to be dangerous but controlled, you know. So along with that right is a responsibility and and I guess maybe from the NRA there should be more discussion of responsibility. Is that possible? That seems to me to be reasonable. So